Okay, hi there, Jeff here, and uh, let's spend a few minutes together just thinking about market structures and economic efficiency. So it's important to know for the exams uh, the extent to which a given market structure does lead to economically efficient outcomes, or possibly, of course, inefficient outcomes, which you can talk about in your analysis and evaluation. So to what extent do, do different uh, market structures lead to varying outcomes for economic efficiency? We're going to focus on the three structures, monopoly, oligopoly, and contestable markets that appear fundamentally across the boards in the advanced information for the 2022 exams. Quick reminder, allocative efficiency uh, is essentially when the value consumers place on a good or service is in balance with the cost of the factor resources used up in production. Essentially, marginal benefit, uh, private marginal benefit equals private marginal cost. And the condition, therefore, is in a competitive market, certainly, that the price charged should reflect the marginal cost of supply. And you could also use this term and should use it in, uh, in any question on externalities. So there's an allocatively efficient equilibrium when the marginal social benefit of uh, consuming or producing goods and services is equal to the marginal social cost of doing so. So with externalities, you're looking for that social equilibrium as allocatively efficient. Productive efficiency happens when the business is operating on the lowest point of their average cost curve. So achieving the optimum cost per unit. And this can either be in the short run uh, lowest point of AC, where MC cuts AC, of course. Or, of course, you might want to think about long-run cost, economies, diseconomies of scale. Uh, that's that Productive efficiency is when a business reaches the minimum efficient scale of production, the lowest feasible cost per unit in the long run. And productive efficiency is also associated with an economy, an economic system or a business, where we're minimising the wastage of factor inputs. In other words, we're operating on our PPF. Dynamic efficiency is uh, more to do with the changing nature of markets. And in particular, it's when businesses in a market, in an industry, successfully meet our changing needs and wants. And so dynamic efficiency, hard to pin down occasionally, but it's linked to the pace of uh, process innovation. That's the way in which we make things and the business models we use. And also critically, product innovation in markets. Uh, the changing characteristics of products, including, for example, their, their technological efficiency, uh, their sustainability, their design, their functionality, all those kind of things are associated with dynamic efficiency. So this will be a quick build. Uh, I'm not going to use diagrams in this video because you've probably had enough of diagrams ahead of revision. But if you can visualize or draw the diagrams, uh, that will be absolutely amazing. But this build just takes you through the three market structures asking the question, what's the likely outcome for allocative, productive and dynamic efficiency? Now, the key word here is likely, because if uh, so clearly in economics, we can say that something is likely to happen. But however, <laughs> the evaluation is that it could be other things that uh, act as a, as, a, as a counterpoint. Contestable markets first. OK, so the likely outcome is good for allocative efficiency. Uh, you see the, the strength of existing and the threat of competition often encourages firms to price low and uh, competitively close to marginal cost. When the threat of entry is low, firms can charge higher prices. In terms of productive efficiency, well, we say that, again, the strength of competition is often a, a catalyst for firms to keep their unit costs under control. And because uh, if they don't, there's an opportunity for new firms to take market share. And dynamic efficiency in theory is quite high. Innovation is critical to the battle for market share. Lots of new entrants uh, are innovative in what they do. It's part of their um, sort of unique, essentially driving force into the market. But however, low prices can lead to low profits. And if you have low profits, then there's less money to reinvest into things like research. In theory, a uh, monopoly leads to allocative inefficiency. It's always a good point to make because the monopoly can use their market power to raise price significantly above marginal cost, especially if the coefficient of price elasticity of demand is low. Again, can you visualize a diagram for that? A monopoly diagram, inelastic demand, 
uh, price well above cost, leading to high supernormal profits. And that allocative inefficiency is reinforced by entry barriers, of course, which prevent successful entry of new firms. So monopoly not great for allocative efficiency. However, you don't you have to drop the assumption that monopolies only charge one price. Uh, you should have revised, hopefully, price discrimination, which is good news for some consumers, particularly those with a low uh, willingness to pay or a high price sensitivity. sensitivity. So monopolists may cut the price to certain groups and closer to marginal cost of supply. Productive efficiency, well, uh, in theory, uh, monopoly is great for productive efficiency, particularly, especially in the case of a natural monopoly where the average cost is continuously falling and there's probably room for only one firm to fully exploit those scale economies. However, there's also the risk of X inefficiency, which is when an organisation incurs higher costs than necessary uh, to produce any given output. It's not producing the goods and services in the cheapest possible way. And it tends to happen because of a lack of competition in the market drives average costs up. Dynamic efficiency. Well, in theory, of course, one of the benefits of monopoly is that it, uh, you generate the supernormal profits to fund research and innovation, which is good for dynamic efficiency. However, the absence of competition can lead to complacency, can lead to risk averse behaviour, and uh, that can be a barrier to innovation in markets. Oligopoly, similar to monopoly in the sense that price will be above marginal cost, therefore there's a loss of allocative efficiency. And of course, critically, if you've studied collusion, you'll know that the firms may collude and set a high price together in a bid to maximise joint profits. That, that is clearly bad news for allocative efficiency in the market. Scale economies, yes, there is lots of potential in an oligopoly for businesses to achieve economies of scale, in particular, uh, because you've got a cluster of big, large firms dominating the market. Again, though, there's also a risk of X inefficiency, particularly in a cartel. And in an oligopoly, uh, you probably often get actually quite high rates of product and process innovation because non-price competition is, is a key part of the battle for market share. So I think in particular a contestable oligopoly where firms are competing with each other and they are highly profitable. That's often good news for product and process innovation. If you're revising this ahead of the exams, maybe this is the moment to take a quick screenshot of this, uh, this little slide. Uh, thank you for joining in this video on market structures and efficiency. Take care and see you soon.